Hello everyone and welcome to the NNL Pro Tournament. The path to pro begins here. I'm Alex Cunningham alongside William Marchese as we kick off the men's semifinals with Matthew Hall taking on Dave Cavanaugh. Alex, I am so excited right now. Both individuals had great first round showings. And now that they, they both have the experience of making a grip gauntlet underneath their belt, I can't wait to see what they have in store for us this time around. Well, let's not waste any time in the intro then. They've both submitted a grip gauntlet up to two minutes, and it's up to you to decide who is the winner of this matchup on creativity, difficulty, variety, and wow factor. And boy, they certainly had some wow factor in the last round. I can't wait to see what they have in this round. So let's see how Dave and Matthew got here. Since moving up to the adults in Season 5, Matthew Hall has had an incredible career. He was second in the Season 5 Power Rankings, and currently finds himself third in the Season 6 Power Rankings, after leading for most of the season. His first round gauntlet started off with a bang, as he effortlessly defeated the vertical limit, then mixed it up with a variety of tough grips and, yes, Will, a pipe slider dismount. Like Matthew, David Cavanaugh has been a Power Rankings beast, going wire to wire as the Season 5 Power Rankings leader. And, though he's yet to win this season, three podiums in six competitions bumped Dave into the top ten in the season six power rankings. In the first round, David wowed audiences with his many changes of direction and exciting laches, in addition to a tough ascending line of thick cannonballs and nunchucks. Well, these are two of our most consistent ninjas, as Dave and Matthew found themselves numbers one and two in the Season 5 Power Rankings. I mean, what else is there to say? They're just strong ninjas, you know? Like you said, they're one and two. They can't get much better than that. They are relatively consistent at doing well at courses and just winning competitions. And even though they do win a lot of competitions, they haven't been in the same competition a lot. Dave in New England, Matthew Hall down in the Southeast, and other than Worlds last year, where Dave got to Stage 2, Matthew got to Stage 3, we really haven't gotten to see them on the same field until now. Yeah, that's the thing when two people live too far from each other. You're not going to get a lot of cross-contamination in terms of performance on the same competition. But that's the beauty of the pro tournament. It doesn't matter how far two people are, they can still play against each other and see how good they are at their grip gauntlets. Well, there are two grip gauntlets that we want you to take a look at for your consideration, and Matthew Hall at Ninja Quest in Georgia will be going first. Hi, my name is Matthew Hall. My last gauntlet was so staticky and not fun to watch. So I'm just going to make it super dynamic, super fun to watch. So yeah. Big moves! More fun to watch, huh? We'll be the judge of that. In any event, starting uh, off, whoa, nice triple man. Superman nice. double. Oh, that was smooth. Man, that was source. so smooth, and this is smooth too. Oh my wow. goodness, linking the fidget spinners. That's about double the distance that they were at the end of stage one at Worlds last year. Chris to the rest. Wow, man, he must be a Zelda fan because that was link like for days. To Aha, right good there. breath. Thank you. Flying Squirrel now, building up a big swing. I'm not sure he needs this big of a swing. You, you wow. could have just Where's gone that one now. For? And he, oh my goodness! <laughs> Whoa! A Holy fly God. away on the Flying Squirrel. I have never seen that. Immediately into the flywheel. There's not even time to comprehend what just happened. He's definitely trying to go for that wow factor. Grabs the cliffhanger room. briefly. Apparently. Now onto the pegboard. Going to slow it down here a bit. Chalk up. Okay. Chalk. Respect. Let's, let's now see what else he can do. He's here. used up a lot of energy. Now he'll have to build energy back up. And he kicks uh, that oh. block. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Cameraman with the Force assist. <laughs> Bit of a technical error there. Clock still running. So, yes, the good news is he didn't fall. The bad news is that cost him a bu bunch of time there, unfortunately. And he catches, it looks like a pretty thin cliffhanger ledge. That is a nice cliffhanger. Now onto the hole punch. So not necessarily a big dynamic move, but a very difficult one, and he is flying through what is usually a very slow and taxing obstacle. Yeah, this is one of those premier obstacles at Ninja Quest. The first hole very... punch, might I add. Exactly. What's he got here? A little bit of a rest. 
shaking the arms out. What's he got left? A sideways Ooh. catch of the I beam and a flyaway wow. dismount. Wow. Will, did we just see what I thought we just saw? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw a couple of flips and some really big links and laches and uh, some big, big moves. Ooh, yeah, no kidding. Wow. Um, I guess you can call him a, a mover and shaker, so to speak. Mm, I'm not sure I'm going to give you that one, but Matthew Hall, yeah. my oh, goodness, well. he said he was going for a wow factor. And I'm not sure there's been a better gauntlet this season in terms of wow factor. But on the flip side, there was not a whole lot of really actual tough grip. There was a cliffhanger in there. And then other than that, there was a hole punch and the rest was mostly Lachey's. You know, that that is very true. I think Matthew is trying to play to a crowd and perhaps win the vote. We'll see how that plays out. You know, that's that's a calculated risk on his part. Like you said, wow factor is one of the factors that the judging is done by, and he is definitely putting a majority of his eggs in that basket. It's a, it's a, it's a bold decision. Let's see if it pays off. Certainly a gamble, and we will see if Dave Cavanaugh is able to wow you with his grip, or perhaps he'll also be going for Lachey's. Only one way to find out. Let's watch. Dave has his work cut out for him, and he's going to start with a lache move. Ooh, going to wing nut to something. It is and, a, uh, wow, ooh, diagonal ooh. bar and a link and another link. Man, diagonal catches are just a little bit tougher. And it looks like he's going to that trapezoid, trapezoid. makes the catch. Special Those delivery things. coming up. Oh, I see a mail slot, indeed. Call Mr. McFeely, it's time for a special delivery. Man, Postman Pete would be proud, and now he's going up the devil's steps. This is the first real static uh, grip we've seen in this in this matchup. Now to the cliffhanger, and look at that. He's moved on to those tiny cliffhanger ledges, just like the, our analyst wanted. Yeah, exactly right. He He's listened. Now he's moving to other ledges, I presume. We'll have to see as the camera pans over. Oh, it's a bar. Oh, it's a bar. But, but, look at this. He had some Northwest Passage hooks on magnets. Northwest Passage at his gym? Apparently. He's been hiding this from everybody. And big moves here. know that. Look at that. He's making that look easy. And these descending moves are more difficult than you would think. And I think... What has he got left? Looks like he's going for a low dismount. And there it is. It. Dave Cavanaugh with a spectacular gauntlet. There were a lot of laches and a lot of really tough grips. I was just surprised that he had a Northwest Passage at his gym. Like, how is he hiding that from us? <laughs> yeah, Although... that Northwest Passage was really difficult, and I tried to allude to it before he ran out of time. Those downwards moves are really tough. Because you're essentially having a one-arm lock-off, having to go to a negative nice and slow so that you don't take all of your momentum down all at once and then lose your grip. That he was able to hang on for those big moves, especially after that hard cliffhanger he did, was incredibly impressive. Very impressive indeed, although I couldn't help but notice something. That Dave had quite a bit of time left on that clock. Mm, you're right. He left some time on the clock last time. And he left some time on the clock this time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the voting. We saw that a couple of times in the first round. For some, it paid off. For others, it didn't. So, yeah, it's going to be yeah, yeah. It's going to be an interesting call. Dave with a great gauntlet, but against that Matthew Hall gauntlet, was it enough? We have two people who would like to give their input before you make your decision, and they are Lucio Batista and Henry Ferrarin. Will the floor is yours. Thank you, Alex. All right, gentlemen, thank you once again as we get to discuss a exciting semifinal matchup between two monumental ninjas. Lucio, Henry, we had some good runs this time around. We're going to start with Lucio this time, and we're going to discuss Matthew first. So uh, 
he did a few flips along the way. How much of a contributing factor would you say that helps to your grip gauntlet? Well, well, I'd like to start out by saying when I watch this video, I took some notes. All right. Okay. And the one thing I first wrote down was just wow in caps with multiple exclamation points, because okay. this is a grip gauntlet and all of the things he needed to do use that grip in all facets. It was insanely impressive. The wow factor was up there to the max. Give us a flyaway in the middle of the course. It, it just, it was epic. It's epic. End of story. Wow. Okay. So, um, Henry, because uh, I like to play devil's advocate, uh, I do have a question for you in that uh, one of the things that Matthew mentioned was that he didn't uh, want to do a course that had too many static moves. But uh, one could argue that maybe he didn't do enough static moves in that gauntlet. Should he have thrown in a little bit more of the static moves uh, for variety's sake? So the answer is yes. Um, if I were to rate his diversity of holds or, or the different grips, um, I want to say 95% of his run was on a bar grip, which is a, considered a jug. Um, but none of that really matters because let's say I give him a seven out of 10 for, for that, for that factor, his not enough diversity of grip. Well, wow factor is oh, an 11 oh. out of 10 because a flyaway regrab, like I'm not, I'm a ninja. Yes. I'm a rock climber. Yes. I'm not a flipper. So I don't have a standing back tuck. Uh, a regular flyaway is is doable to learn. A flyaway regrab in the middle of a grip gauntlet is fire. It is fire, 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 dude. It's so dope. But you're right, diversity of grip wasn't a, it wasn't perfect. Um, but the wow factor was, in my opinion. All right, very good, very good. Uh, moving on to Dave's run, uh, we're going to stick with Henry for this first question. Um, how do you feel like he was able to incorporate your criticisms and feedback from the first round? And do you think he was able to uh, incorporate that into his run uh, this time around? Yeah, uh, um, absolutely. He, um, Dave had a, had, a, had a great run. He, um, he was linking through the start. He was actually moving really fast. I don't, he might've moved a little too fast and, and his planning might've been off because uh, he ended up being done and it was like a minute 30. Um, Really liked how he now threw in the, uh, he has a, uh, at TA Fitness, there's a very, very hard uh, cliffhanger ledge. And I don't even know how many millimeters it is, but it's hard. Um, yeah, it's very, very tiny. And, uh, and he, he incorporated that in it. Um, I think Lucho gave him a suggestion to throw that in there. And he listened. And, and he had a really, really good um, gauntlet, a really good run. And then... You got, you got to see Northwest Passage, like his, his like finishing was coming down that. And then I would, I would have loved to see him go back up when he, uh, when he still had like 20 or 30 seconds left. And I think he just ended up dismounting. Um, and that's going to that's gonna hurt him. Um, he didn't go for the full two minutes. Um, but I was, I was very impressed with his, with his run. I thought he had a lot of dynamic moves. He had great diversity of grip. So I'll give that a, that a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. But um, yeah, so so great run. He didn't last the full two minutes. To me, that's always like, it's always unfortunate because you can't really, you can't really give a push for that person when they don't go for the full two minutes. All right, uh, thank you. For moving on to Lucio. So uh, going, sticking to that topic of completing the full two minutes, uh, that we have discussed this topic a couple of times in the past. One person, it arguably cost them the win, and the other person was able to secure the win. So. This is a bit of a two-parter. Do you think that Dave's run would have been more complete if he did the same exact obstacles but slower to fill out the full two minutes or the fact that he did that entire course in a minute 30 mi without going back up and doing other stuff seems more impressive? I, I'm personally a fan of the ninjas packing as much content in within the 
full time frame. So to answer your question, I personally would have liked to have seen Dave stay at the same pace he was at and just give us more content. I know he has the gas tank. I know he has the skill. I've been on that cliffhanger, first of all, and I know how ridiculously small those ledges are. It doesn't do any justice from that video, how impressive that was. But the Northwest Passage, he should have absolutely gone back up that, and he should have given us something else after that. I know he could have done it. I, I don't know exactly why he dismounted at that point. Maybe he just didn't pre-plan it and thought he finished. But I would just say, give us the speed. There's nothing wrong with the speed, but just fill up the time. That's it. All right. So it sounds like we have two uh, sort of, I guess, different of philosophies this time around. Uh, so before I ask you the the big question, it seems like we have a, a challenge of a uh, strong variety of tough, staticky grips versus strong, uh, very big, difficult laches. So my answer to you, question, I should say, to you gentlemen, is who should move on to the grand finals? Should it be Matthew or should it be Dave? Lucio, you're up first. I said it before, it's just that wow. Matthew Hall just obliterated, the wow chart just exploded. The amount of technical difficulty in what he was doing is really high and he could have fallen on so many of those things and just the flyway re-grab in the middle like he, he's got it matthew's got it all right uh henry same question to you this is um easy um and, and i love dave i think dave is an amazing athlete he had to he had to go the full two minutes though for him to have a shot at this uh and possibly he might he might as well have but wow factor Flyway regrab on the flying squirrels. Very, very impressive to me. And like Lucio said, it's it's also you get your 10 points for wild, wild factor, but technical difficulty level on a regrab is is a flyway regrab is is up there. So and and let's not sleep on 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 Matthew's grip strength. Like he still threw in, he still threw in a, a giant lache to a to what looked like a tiny cliffhanger. There was a, there was the hole punch obstacle so he showed his gas tank as well um hands down uh for this one it goes to matthew all right well thank you gentlemen once again for your input and i look forward to more discussions in the future same so there you have it ladies and gentlemen both henry and lucio agree that they preferred matthew's run over david but at the end of the day their opinion, it doesn't matter all that much. They're only two men. And what really matters is how you vote. So please do us all a favor. Click the link in the description down below and cast your vote for who should move on to the finals of the Men Pro Tournament. I think they're both worthy of moving on, but there can be only one. And in fact, you may be the one vote that decides it. Who knows? So make sure you make your voice heard. You only have 72 hours from the posting of this video to vote. And like I said, you could be the one that swings the tide. Does the, you know, fly away lache into the next round. <laughs> These were two great gauntlets, and I am glad that I am ineligible to vote. So, make your voice heard, and we will see who faces the winner of this matchup in our next matchup of the NNL Pro Tournament. Until then, he's William Marchese, I'm Alex Cunningham, and we'll catch you next time on the NNL Pro Tournament. I think I said Pro Tournament twice. Wait, we're, in, we're, we're now eligible from voting? Have you been voting? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs>